Hi, hello, I'm Bear, and today I'm sick, but we're going to talk about OpenAI and ChatGPT. Uh, Prerex, JavaScript knowledge, Node.js, and have worked with an API maybe at least once. Okay, firstly, copy this code or go to my GitHub and get it there, link in the description. This code is in JavaScript using Node.js and is extremely simple, so let me just go over it really quick. This bit of code initializes the OpenAI API. This function makes a call to the GPT-3 endpoint. This function makes a call to the DAL-E endpoint. The first four lines of code are really self-explanatory, so just make sure you grab your token from the OpenAI website and plug it in accordingly. So now let's talk about the endpoint calls. The GPT-3 text completion endpoint is a text completion AI. Think autocomplete on your phone, just way better. Anyways, since this is essentially autocomplete, this is why this method name here is create completion. Makes sense. GPT-3 has four models you could choose from, Ada, Babbage, Curry, and DaVinci. Starting at Ada, the AI becomes more powerful and expensive the higher you go. DaVinci currently is the most advanced and most expensive, and probably the reason AI is in the news nowadays. There are also different versions you can use. Currently, only DaVinci has more than one version, currently version 3. This is why the model key for this JavaScript object is text-DaVinci-003, as it is a text completion model named DaVinci version 3. Easy. The prompt is obviously what you feed the AI to get your response. Next, temperature, which is a float from 0 to 1, but you could think of this as a slider. On the 0 side of the slider is accuracy, on the 1 side is confidence. The more confident, the less accurate the response, but the more creative the answer. The more accurate, the more cookie cutter the response is going to be. Lastly, max tokens, which tokens we will discuss later, but for now, one token represents on average four characters. If you combine the prompt and the response, the AI will stop as soon as it hits the max tokens you input here. Then we obviously grab the response and print it to the console. Easy. If we now look at the doll E function, everything should make sense, except for maybe the object key N, which is the number of images it should generate per prompt. Also, instead of parsing a response and printing it to the console, instead, we are grabbing the generated URL for the generated images. With all that being said, you can now choose an endpoint, write a prompt, and run the application through Node, and ta-da, we now have an extremely powerful AI at our fingertips. But first, we should probably hammer out a few details. Firstly, and most importantly, tokens. Unlike Doll E, which rate limits and charges per image, which is easy to understand, GPT-3 uses tokens, which is an obscure metric to use when deciding rate limits and cost. In fact, to completely understand how much a request will cost, you will need to know exactly how the AI works, which is impossible unless you are one of the programmers. Fortunately, OpenAI has suggested that the rule of thumb for tokens is four characters, so just go with that because tokens are generated seemingly contextually per the sentence or by determined patterns and are near impossible to determine from the outside. This leads me into cost. It ain't cheap. For the first three months, you get 18 US dollars in credits. Your free trial expires when you either run out of credits or the three months are up. After that, if you want to access the DaVinci endpoint, it costs a staggering two cents per thousand tokens. And while a thousand tokens is about the same amount of characters as a college essay, two cents may not seem like a lot for that amount, but just imagine even a small user base of a thousand people on your application using only half that amount a day is still a hundred dollars a day. OpenAI is absolutely swimming in it. Now granted, OpenAI offers three other models that are a fraction of the cost, but what you gain in cost, you lose in performance. According to the documentation, OpenAI recommends implementing GPT-3 using DaVinci and then dialing back to cheaper models and testing to see if you get the same performance to save costs. Lastly, let's do a quick fire round of some last minute details. One, you can use the fine tune endpoint to train a model to do exactly what you need it to do. I personally have no use for this or don't have any data sets, so research this yourself. Two, as an individual, you will never exceed the rate limits, but if you must know, you can do 20 requests per minute and 150,000 tokens per minute on the free tier. Three, don't be deterred by the cost. OpenAI offers a moderation tool that is designed to recognize inappropriate speech that is completely free and relatively useful. And that's it. This has been ChatGPT and OpenAI in five minutes. Thanks for watching, like, comment, and subscribe down below if you don't, AI is definitely going to take your jobs. Okay, bye.